in this video, we're going to be tackling the lead code question, encode, and decode strings. So this question is a bit of an oxymoron. It's simple, but it's complex at the exact same time. And it's simple in its implementation. Because in order to solve this leak code question, the only thing that we're going to have to do is create two simple methods, encode and decode. If we want to encode something, which is the method right here, the only thing that we have to do is take this list, this collection, and turn it into a single string. And if we want to decode something, we just do the opposite. We take the string, whether we created it or somebody else gave it to us, and then we convert it into a list, or we convert it into some piece of memory that we can use on our computer. And this is simple, but where things get more complex is understanding, encoding, decoding, and how all of this works with ASCII and Unicode. But let's just start off simple. Let's talk about encoding and decoding. The reason that we have to encode and decode is because we have to take information that's on our computer and send it to other computers. We send it to a database. We send it across the network to another computer in another country. We also can send data to a disk and all of these require encoding and decoding. But why exactly is that? Well, look at it like this. On your computer, you have information. Let's say that this code, this object exists on our computer. Very similar to the thoughts inside of your head. Those thoughts, that code, exist within memory and nobody else can see it. Nobody else can see the thoughts that are inside of your head because they exist within your computer, within your memory. And in order to actually be able to communicate these thoughts, communicate this code, send it to somebody else, send it to another computer, you're going to have to translate it. You're going to have to create a medium in which it can be sent across the wire or to another computer across the world. That is encoding and decoding in a nutshell. But how exactly does this work with ASCII and UTF-8? So look at it like this. There's many ways to solve this problem. The most common way, and you see this everywhere, and there's nothing wrong with this way, is to just iterate through each individual element. And for each individual element, we'll sandwich, let's say, a hash in the middle. Or you could also put a slash here, but I'm just going to pass in a hash. And what the person on the other side could do is just iterate through each individual word, find where the hash is, and split it apart. Or they could do the more simple approaches. They could just split it with a method just like that and pass in a hash. And like I said, that definitely works. But here's where things begin to break down. Let's say that the person inadvertently passes in a hash into an actual word. Well, the actual encoding will work. We can encode this over, but where things are going to break down is when we try to translate it back into an array or a list in this case. And when we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to get too many elements. It's going to, instead of world, we're going to have were and the LD in two separate places. We don't want that. How exactly are we going to be able to beat this? The way that we're going to solve this problem is instead of using ASCII, which is what we were using before, this hash symbol is an ASCII-based delimiter. We're going to use Unicode. But what's the difference between Unicode and what's the difference between ASCII? Well, ASCII is the predecessor to Unicode. Think way back, way back in the day. You probably didn't see too many emojis. You didn't see rat emojis. You didn't see eggplant or peach emojis anywhere. And that's because most of the time we were working off ASCII. And ASCII, not only does it not have emojis, but it's basically just English characters and your most common symbols. And people finally woke up and said, 
you know, G, we're going to have to support all of these fucking crazy emojis. And we're also going to have to support different languages. Thus, Unicode was born. But the way that it relates to this problem is that LeetCode specifically states that you have to pass in ASCII. Therefore, the input will never be Unicode. So instead of separating out our elements based on the hash symbol, what we can do is we can just grab any piece of Unicode just like this. And in theory, instead of having this hash, we could just have cute little rats in between our individual words. And that's definitely one way that we could solve this problem. But LeetCode throws us another zinger and they state, what if there could also be passed in Unicode? And that's where we're going to get to our final optimized solution, the length chunk-based encoding. Length and chunk-based encoding is incredibly simple to understand. It's basically the same exact thing. What's going to happen is we're going to have delimiters. But in this case, the length is going to be prefixed to the delimiter. And this is going to allow it so that when the person on the other side goes to decode it, they will know where the word exactly starts and ends. And with that, they can quickly and easily, without any worry about screwing up the algorithm, pass in the same exact delimiter in the middle of the word. And because we have the length, it's not going to chop it off where we don't want it to. So here's exactly how this algorithm is going to work. First things first, we're going to start with the encoding. So we're going to be given a list of strings. Let's say that we're going to be given just a simple example, hello and world. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each individual strings and we're going to add them to a broader string. We're going to use string builder, but we're getting kind of ahead of ourselves. We'll talk about that later. But before we add this word, to the string, to the string builder, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to tack on the length. And the length is very easy to find because there's just a property that allows you to do it. And it looks exactly like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to tack on the delimiter of our choice. Because we're using chunk-based encoding, we don't actually have to use any Unicode, but you could use Unicode if you want to. You could put a cute little rat or a splash symbol or a peach emoji if you so choose. Then what we're gonna do is we're just going to tack on the first word. Pretty simple. Then next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to take the length, tack on the length, tack on the delimiter of our choice, then we'll tack on the individual word itself. And that's pretty much it for the encoding. The decoding is going to use a form of two pointer. There's many ways that you could do this, but I chose the two pointer way. Just like every other two pointer approach, what we're going to do is we're going to declare I, we're going to declare J. These are just variables and we're going to set them at the very start. We're going to set them at zero. Then what we're going to do is you could take either pointer, by the way, you could do this with either one, it doesn't matter. We're going to begin iterating till we reach our delimiter. And when we reach our delimiter, that means that we found what we want. We found the beginning of a word. And because we've always prefixed the length, every single time that there was a new word, we've prefixed the length, we don't have to worry about each individual element that's contained within the word. We can just take the length, we can extract out the individual words. So in this case is going to be hello. And what we can do is instead of keeping iterating, instead of iterating through each individual element or taking this I and trying to iterate over each individual element within the hello, because we know the length, what we can do is we can just skip. We can just skip to the very end. We can skip to the five. And then we're going to repeat this exact same process. This J is going to keep repeating until it reaches our delimiter, which in this case is our hash. And it's going to do the exact same thing because we have the length. We don't have to worry about iterating. We can just quickly extract out the second word, which is world in this case. And that's how the algorithm works. And now that we're at the end, the while loop is going to break out and we've reached the end of the algorithm. 
Congratulations. You now know how the algorithm works. Let's go ahead. Let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code it. So we are inside of IntelliJ. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. And I'm going to call this Codec. Codec is kind of a fancy word, but it's just code that does encoding and decoding, which is what we're going to do right now. So let's create our encoding. And this is going to take in a list of strings. So we'll create our list of strings. And I'm going to go ahead and import this. And I'm going to abbreviate the strings as STRS, which is what Leak Code wants. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use String Builder. So here's a good tip. If you're ever manipulating strings inside of a for loop, which we're about to do, you definitely want to use String Builder. The reason that you want to use String Builder is because it's going to create the string at one time instead of creating it over and over and causing our time and space complexity, time and space complexity to go out of control. And when we append, this is what we have to do. We have to append when you use String Builder. What we're going to do is first we're going to append the length, then we're going to append our delimiter. So we're going to, and you could use whatever you want to. You could use Unicode, you could use ASCII. I'm just going to use a hash in this case. And we're also going to append the word at the very end. So we have the length, we have the delimiter, which is a hash in this case, and then we have the word. Then what we're gonna do is, remember, it's not going to, each time it appends, it's not going to create a new string, but at the very end, we have to be careful because we have to use the two string method on String Builder, which is going to create the string for us at the very end. So here's where we're going to create the decoding, the decode method. And we're going to return a list of strings. So essentially the opposite, we're going to call it decode. And we're going to pass in a string. I'm just going to call this S. That's actually what Leak Code wants you to do, by the way, as well. So we're going to need to return this. So we're going to have to return this data structure. And let's go ahead, create this data structure for us to return. We need to create this. And instead of strings, I'm going to call this result. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to create our two pointers. So our first pointer is going to be I. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop. And the reason that we're going to use a while loop over a for loop is because with each iteration, we have no idea how long the word will be. And if you look at a traditional for loop, you see I++. A while loop could have an increment of any number while a for loop has to have an increment of I++ or some type of number that you set explicitly. It can't be just dynamic. It can't be whatever you want, like a while loop. Then what we're going to do is we're going to declare J is equal to I. And this is going to be what causes the pointer to skip over the word each time so that we don't have to actually iterate through or create another string pipeline to iterate through that word. Now that we've gotten our two pointers taken care of, we're going to begin iterating within the actual string. And the first thing that we're going to search for is a hash, but we're not going to iterate until we actually reach the hash because we just want the length. We don't want to iterate till we actually reach the hash at this point. And the reason that we want to do that is because Right now, we need to find the length. We're not concerned about anything else. Let's just find the length first. And in order to find the length, we're going to have to iterate till we reach the hash. And once we reach the ending hash, what we're going to do is we're going to parse out the length. You see, it's a string right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in our i and j, chop it up, and then turn it into an integer, turn it into the length. Now that we have the length, we're pretty much good to go. But here's the thing. We also have to chop out that word. So what are we going to do? Well, we still have to do something with I. And what we're going to do is we're going to assign I to J plus one. We're going to assign I to J plus one because that's the beginning of the word. That's how we're going to begin extracting out the word. We need the beginning of the word. But... We also know the end because we attach the length, because we attach the length in the form of a prefix, 
we also have the ending length as well too. So now that we have the beginning, now that we have the end, the only thing that we have to do is pass it into a substring method so that we can chop it up. And it's trying to pass in i and i, but what we really want is i plus length because that's the length of the whole entire word. It's the beginning and the end. And now that we have i, that's the beginning, and we have the length, that's the end. So we add both of them together and we get what we want to chunk out. Then what are we going to do? We're going to increment the i and the length so that we can repeat this process all over again. So that when we re-enter the while loop, the j is going to reset, the i is reset, and we're now at the beginning of the new chunk. So that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's return the result. We should be good to go. We're going to take this code right here, we're going to take the encoding and the decoding, and let's toss it into leak code, see what we get. And when I bring over leak code, actually I need to get out of full screen mode here. I'm in full screen. So when we bring over leak code, I'm just going to take those two methods that we created and toss them in there. Go ahead, hit that run button, hit that submit button. Congratulations, we have passed the interview. Our time complexity is N and our space complexity, let's see here gonna be in as well too hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching